talk about horror fantasies. I'm sure some of you are wondering why in the world would anybody want to consensually do any of those horrific, crazy, and terrifying things that you see in movies? Why in the world would anybody want to do that? Well, there's actually a lot of different reasons, and some of them may be things that you're already engaging in to arouse yourself without even realizing that you are. First is to understand that horror fantasies are kind of based on our primal human fears, things that are deep coded in our DNA, the fear of spiders, the fear of heights, the fear of death or drowning, the fear of being burned alive. We normally would enjoy any of these things. These are kind of your atypical sorts of experiences. And the reason why we choose to engage in these things in this kind of sexy way is to cause an adrenaline rush. It's the same exact reason why people choose to face their fears and go on amusement parks that have those crazy horrible drops and then they go up again and then they go down again and then they go up and down and up and down and it's terrible. As somebody who's afraid of heights, I will never go on those rides. But some people get an adrenaline rush, a full system arousal from that experience. It's the same thing, my friends. It's the same thing. Whether it's somebody mock chasing you and pursuing you and you're running away and no, don't get me, no, stop, please, don't. And of course, you know that they're going to get you. It's the same kind of a general in rush that you get from going through a haunted house and being chased by scare actors. Also, something on my no list I don't do that. I don't, I don't like those. You see, I have this reflex where if somebody like jumps at me, my impulse isn't to go, ah, I'm scared. My impulse is to go, ha, pa, and punch. And you don't want to do that to a scare actor because that's not nice. So, um, I usually try to avoid, avoid those things. <laughs> Keep in mind, that all of this type of play is very, very consensual, very explicitly negotiated. It's not the sort of thing that you're just like choosing to pull on a horror mask and surprise your partner with a horror fantasy. No, this is not a surprise. This is definitely something that you need to negotiate in advance with your partner, with their consent, very, very explicitly. I strongly recommend having these conversations in advance of actually doing the experience. This way, there's some distance and that adrenaline rush really gets to like jump up and be extra heightened. Because, yeah, you've talked about it, but you don't know everything in that moment, though. Like, you're not thinking back to, oh, yeah, this and then this and then this. It feels a little bit more spontaneous, even though it's still very, very planned. This kind of horror fantasy allows for kind of an unexpected arousal when you're exploring something that's taboo or forbidden, something that you're not supposed to be into. A little part of your brain gets like scratched and you're like, yeah, yeah. And that's a good thing. Particularly in this sense, you can kind of harness that and make the experience even more enjoyable for yourself. Horror fantasies are just so, so much fun. And it's the kind of thing you might start out thinking isn't for you. And by the time that we get to the end of this week's episode, I think I may have converted a few of you over to horror fantasies. Especially by the time that we start getting into some of the example ideas of ways that you can start to explore these sorts of things. Hey friends! Thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I hope you'll choose to join me live for Coffee with Alice at 10.30 a.m. PST each and every Thursday. Make sure to like this video and then subscribe to my channel and turn on the bell notification. This way, 
You'll find out each and every time I go live and you'll never miss any new content. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.